Hello everyone and welcome to Wolford Weekly, your EastEnders podcast where we will be discussing the stories that were aired on the BBC in the UK on the dates between Monday the 1st and Friday the 5th of March. Now Rafi, can you find someone who is appropriate to host the show with me today? I have searched the web and the results show that Rob has nothing better to do. Well, you better call Rob then. Calling Rob. <laughs> Hello, you're all right. I had no idea what you were on about then and then remembered. <laughs> Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Don't worry, in edit, I will put the bits in the middle. <laughs> Fabulous. I had a lovely lie in this morning. It was lovely. Did you? Oh, that yeah, was good. So yeah. did I. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not my fault. It's right. Alex likes to do these these recordings. If it was up to Alex, we'd be doing these at the crack of dawn every <laughs> every week. Like, as soon as, like, the morning chorus sounds over horizon, I got a text from Alex. Do you awake yet? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, it's right. I overslept this morning. I was supposed to set my alarm for nine and then, fr- frankly, ignored it. It was like, no, you can go away. And then realised I was supposed to be up. I was like, I'm sorry. We're lucky for us all. I was stuck in traffic because some inconsiderate yeah. person decided not to check their car before they went out this morning. <laughs> Alex got arrested for road race. <laughs> so uh, this week on EastEnders, I'm not going to lie, I was quite disappointed. See, I didn't, I, apart from Thursday, which I thought was poor, I didn't think it was that bad this week. So we're going to have a row this week. Can't wait. Yeah, so look forward to that, listeners. We're going to start off with uh, a couple of little stories, all revolving around the idea of love. You know, Valentine's Day was a month ago, but EastEnders just can't forget about it. Because first of all, love is blossoming because Lola, it was very accepting when she found out this mm. week. About... Really, really, really out of characterly, uh, res- <laughs> like responsible and reasonable about the whole thing. <laughs> Yes, she was. It really was. I'm um, so surprised. But the way that Isaac came out with it, I thought was a little bit kind of shoehorned, a little bit forced, you know, it didn't come well, out very naturally. How would, you, how would you have done it? So imagine like we're, we're, we're like, we're on a date in, in Ian's restaurant oh, with Rob. no owners <laughs> you or treat no staff. Me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> lucky date two would be McDonald's. Uh, right. So we're sat there. You're, you're the one that's schizophrenia. How do you tell me? Well, I'm sat there stuffing my face full of carbonara. How do you tell someone subtly that you've got schizophrenia? I don't know. I just think that the way he kind of just, he just blurted it out. is the kind same of put way half a mask of... on your face, like the Phantom of the Opera or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And start taking you down to the under depths of Walford on a canal boat. <laughs> no, like... I just, I, the way he kind of came out with it with in front of his mum was obviously for the benefit of us at home. But yes. this week, I don't know, I felt as shocked as Lola felt. Sat, sat there with her eyes wide and her mouth, mouth like wide open, just, <laughs> just shocked by the whole thing. It just I feel like Isaac was wanting to just get it out of the way more than anything. I mean, yeah, mm. it maybe shoehorned ever so slightly, but I felt that it was more to do with, the, you know, he was clearly nervous about the idea of telling her. And she, especially when she was sat there saying, oh, you know, it's nice to sit here with someone who's just normal. And um, yeah, and I then that's he when he just wanted to get it out of the way. And that's when he said it. He was like, well, would you consider schizophrenia normal? And it was like, mm. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I, I know. I, you know, I just, I don't know. But I, I like it. I like it. And I like that Lola is accepting of it because we both were adamant that she was just going to have this kind of mad panic attack about the whole thing. She did yeah, well, ask t- her smart speaker uh, yeah. about it. <laughs> I mean, that scene was ridiculous. I mean, I thought it was quite realistic of the uh, the Wi-Fi. Lola decides to ask Raffi, is schizophrenia dangerous? And then the Wi-Fi doesn't work for about two minutes until Isaac arrives at the front door. And then all of a sudden, when Isaac is standing there, Raffi then replies, here's what I found about why schizophrenia is dangerous. So that was ever so slightly awkward. But then they have a full-on conversation about it. And it seems that Isaac has got this kind of mostly under control, doesn't it? It doesn't seem mm. like it's something that really affects his life at the moment. Mm. Now, presumably, we are going to get some point where he isn't taking the medication or in some way his schizophrenia really kind of comes to the forefront, which would be interesting. But at the minute, he seems to be like, it, everything seems to be fine. Yeah, I, I mean, the whole medication thing, I don't think is going to be the path of how we see angry or schizophrenic uh, uh, Isaac because he's so adamant that Patrick needs to take his. So I wonder what the trigger is going to be. And I know last week we discussed it with a bit of detail that there is, there is no trigger. You know, schizophrenia is something you, you know, you have. And it, it, but there is something that kind of maybe pushes you maybe a little bit more further toward the... Uh, the problem than perhaps yeah. other things so i wonder what it could be and i wonder if it I would hope be it's not i hope it's not something like lola two times him or something like that's that. 
that's exactly the nail on the head I was, <laughs> I was heading toward because Lola has a bit of a history of not being able to settle. And I mean, it's lovely and sweetness and light at the moment with Lola, the way that she kind of finds this, you know, this this relationship with Isaac very new and very exciting. But, you know, uh, a few months down the line, it's not going to take much, is it? And we we know that it was his past relationship is what caused him to kind of have that outburst, really, the first time round. <laughs> And, uh, you know, is it going to be more of the same then? Because Lola is Lola relationships don't t- don't go well together. Let's just say no, that, they don't they? tend to last that that no, long. In no. fact, this is one of her long. This is one of her longest lasting so far. I think, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. So we'll have to see. But I, I mean, it was, I thought it was a sweet moment. I thought the moment when he came to the door, he said, oh, I've brought dessert early. And uh, I thought it was a nice moment. And I thought it was very natural as well, the way that the, as you say, the Raffi speaker, <laughs> Raffi, mm. of all the names they could have named it, Raffi. Raffi, where did they get that from? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I thought that was really good um, because, as you say, that's we've all had it. We've all had Wi-Fi. We have problems when we record sometimes where I can't hear a word you're saying and you talk on mm. and on and on and on. <laughs> Mm. Uninterrupted by or me, pretends, yeah. or he pretends he can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just walk off, go to the toilet, come back, and like, yes, yeah. I agree. Rob. Drive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, Rob. And then I just carry yeah. on. <laughs> More love on the square between Kush and Wit, but Gray ah, yes. has just found out because Wit and Kush are being very open about it. Cat doesn't seem to mind because Cat's got other fish to fry or other <laughs> yes. Mitch, other Mitchells to lay, we should say. Oh, um, and but but Gray was also told this week in the Vic, and I think if it was in any other environment rather than a public one, I think Gray perhaps would have maybe had a trigger at that point, and mm. uh, his eye might have started to twitch and a vein started to pulsate from yep. his forehead, and a plate would have been thrown across the room or something like yes. that. I like. Whitney's hair is nice at the moment, isn't it? She dyed it red. I feel, <laughs> I feel like Whitney. It's weird though. It's like whenever Whitney is getting some, she, she dyes her hair. It's like it's always a good. It's always a good indication because she's like, oh, I've got a new man. I must do my hair. And like at the minute, she's like pillar box red, <laughs> which I thought. I it's what suits her. Yeah, it's a nice colour, actually. It does suit yeah, her. Yeah, it is. Mm. Basically, this one, the one scene that we saw on Valentine's Day with the two of them um, having pizza that both me and Alex were livid about. Uh, <laughs> that it, pepperoni placement. That I'm pepperoni, still living about oh, it. Oh. Well, the uncooked pepperoni placement. Oh, oh God. We live it. that pizza. Wouldn't get that a pizza, I'd tell you. And <laughs> send it back? Yeah, I would. <laughs> uh, yes, after that one scene, these two apparently have been at it like rabbits. They're now ready to become an official item, which I thought was quite quick even for Walford relationship standards but you know that's that's I think it's more because Kush feels like you could go to prison at any moment yeah. because they keep reminding us that this trial yeah. is, is coming up I keep forgetting because Kush is living literally a completely normal life <laughs> a very moment. a very free man's life like nothing is very about to happen free. no no nothing is hanging over his head at all he's just quite... him and Lucas are just having a great time <laughs> <laughs> swinging around the square and not a care in the world yeah no. he, Kush has brought it up now twice um, once last week once this week that you know he has he's, his time is short um um, and <laughs> and uh, the actor had filmed his last scenes this week yes. as well. So we know that, what, about six weeks now? We've got six more weeks of Kush. Which makes me think that he's going to prison. Yes, or, as a lot of predictions uh, out there, is that Grey's not a happy bunny about this whole situation. I, and he, I swear to God, if he kills Kush... It'd be ruined, I'm, absolutely ruined. will not be responsible for my actions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think lockdown you'll... or no lockdown, I am going to London. <laughs> <laughs> you speak for a lot of people about that because yes. it's just a it's a very poor choice. If the photographs are anything to go by on his Instagram, I think he's leaving on a quite happy terms. But fingers crossed. It doesn't sound like he's going back though, does it? I was looking at some of the comments and uh, from some of the cast members. Um, Lacey Turner is complaining about the fact that she doesn't want anyone anyone else next to her on the dressing room rotor, which I think is fair enough <laughs> because diva. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, but like, come on, it's Davood. Come on, so he takes his top off. Would you want anybody else opposite you after six no. years of that? I know I wouldn't. That's very um, true. And it just and the way that he kind of worded his goodbye doesn't sound like he's going back anytime soon. So I'm concerned. Mm. Um, but we will see where it goes. A lot of actors. I mean, this is a topic in itself. But a lot of actors who have left or are still on the show actually are being quite openly vocal about the direction of some of their character stories that they feel like maybe the characters aren't really doing what they should do. L- Louisa Leighton has made a point of it a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, Was she. She did. She she made. What did a, she say? She she kind of circled around the topic that she wanted to do a story where she lost her child, but not the way it's been written. Oh, she, oh. It was during an interview. I think it might have been this morning again. This morning gets all the scoops. 
They do. Philip, something about Philip Schofield. He that, just gets the, the cast to slag off the show that they're on. <laughs> he's Genius a interviewing. Silver Fox, that's what he, he is. is. Um, so I'd be interested to know if there is an interview with Davood soon or soon. I mean, Davood, if you want to do an interview with us. Come we're, on, we're free now. We're, we're, free. we're lovely people. We, we are, are lovely. Come up, come talk to us. You can get changed next to me if you like. I don't mind. All night long. Yeah, we don't I, mind. I don't we won't my hair red. about your dressing room. No. <laughs> not, yeah, exactly. Not one Pillow eye box red. <laughs> Fine. That's something to look out for. But yes, hopefully this Kush... Hope, I'm hoping, this sounds a really weird thing to say, but I'm hoping it is that Kush goes to prison because then... At yeah, least, so am I. At least he he's alive. Back. He's alive, he can come back and he can bring Carmel back with him too because I love her. Bring yes. back Carmel. But then, it's like, what is it... Remind me again, what is he actually at some point <laughs> going to be on trial for? It's all to do with that... Uh, it's all to do with the H word, wasn't it? The heist, yes. It yes. was the heist. But not just that, he also is t- picking up a few crimes that have been linked Here to Phil there. Mitchell. And he's is doing, that still happening? I th- believe so. I don't know. I don't. Heard, I haven't heard anything to say the contrary. So I believe no. so. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just trying to think how long he would realistically go. If the worst case scenario, it's not going to be a life imprisonment thing, is it? No, it wouldn't be like, life. What, what six years at the most? I mean, Lucas had life. Behavior. I mean, I say exactly. Lucas is out. <laughs> so Kush has nothing to worry about. <laughs> He'll be out in a week. He'll be fine. Yeah. Just find God. He'll be fine. Yeah, be re. <laughs> Right, talking about crimes, we're going on to the Mitchells then and the Panasars. Two stories this week. Uh, we're starting off with the one that I, I'm putting my hands up right now. You know you I don't it. like gangster stuff. I hated every <sighs> single minute of it. Every time a, a, the scenes were happening. Luckily, it was only on two days, Monday and Tuesday. But every time the scene popped up, honestly, I just sighed. I just looked at my phone. I found there's something other things to do. And um, I just basically asked Ben what had happened <laughs> every time. Every See, time it happened. On the other on the other foot, I thought Monday and Tuesday were the strongest episodes of the week. Oh, I spat out my coffee. I just did it very quietly. Good. It doesn't agree with you. No. Um, I, I mean, and don't get me wrong. It got very mad <laughs> at one point. Run it down. For you me. Ha- run it down. All right. So basically, Ben and Kierat have now offici- have now sort of made a team. Um, I'm still not entirely convinced that Ben is to be trusted in this scenario. But either way, Kierat and Ben meet Stan. At the Arches. Not Stan. Dax. Staz. Staz. Oh, Staz. Russian heritage. Now, so, so yeah, basically, uh, Staz from Costco or wherever, or wherever he's from. Is that a place in Russia? It is, isn't it? Costco. 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 <laughs> it's something like that, isn't it? The Costco. Costco. No, Costco is a large supermarket chain originated from America. <laughs> that's Tesco. No, that's Tesco. Cost- <laughs> Costco. Costco. Well, you need a Costco card. Oh, to yes. Go in. yes. Costco. Costco. <laughs> You mean Moscow? <laughs> no, there's, I swear there's something that's Costco or Crosco or so anyway, some city in Russia, some large province in the, in the country of Russia. Right. Um, yeah, they meet up at the Archers, and yes. the, the well, the idea basically is to try and appease um, Staz, yes. and because because Staz is very cross at the moment because of the fact that. Well, a he's thinking that Ben can't be trusted, and he's kind of leaning more into giving the the uh, the Panasars this big job uh, that's going on. So his idea to sort of reaffirm his influence over the two of them and his reputation of not being mad whatsoever, because that's a grave insult <laughs> and shows no respect to him whatsoever. His response to to being accused of being mad is to hold them hostage in mm. the archers whilst pointing a gun at a canister of gas that could blow up with one bullet, including blowing up himself, but that's irrelevant because clearly Staz isn't worried about that. While dancing, <laughs> while dancing to Russian music. While dancing to Russian club music, which yeah. I thought was a nice touch. <laughs> Did you? Wait, he, I... I, yeah. I I wish he had a bottle of vodka on him. That that would have just basically that would have that stamped would have, stereotype, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have. That, well, that would have reminded me that he was Russian. Yes, anyway. <laughs> I needed reminding of that because it wasn't mentioned yeah. at least twenty times. He this week. doesn't sound Russian. I'm sorry, he really doesn't. When He's, ben did bring uh, he up. Sounds he sounds chav had, more than anything. He, d- <laughs> he looks chav as well. He Ben did yeah. bring up that he he's not really Russian. He did a DNA test, didn't he? And he was like three point five percent Russian. And that's, but that's enough. And that's <laughs> enough to make him. So again, reaffirm, affirming to us that he is a little bit nutty. He's um little bit, mm. but don't call him nutty, otherwise he'll try and kill no, you. No, no, <laughs> and the himself. Most dramatic way possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Effectively, he wanted he, his response to that was to attempt to become a suicide bomber mm. in some respect, wasn't mm. it? Because he was literally just going to, for a start. 
I would have thought that the health and safety officials that have gone over the archers over the years would have taken one look at Phil Mitchell and go, yeah, well, you're not having gas canisters in here for a start. <laughs> Has Absolutely Kent. not. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I, I was um, a little bit excited at the thought of them doing a big stunt, I must say. I, I would have th- liked it. Because I, uh... I, kind of, I think there was about 10% of me that was kind of thinking, oh, is the archers about to blow up? That yeah, would be I did. I but did no, too. We didn't, we didn't get it. Mm, um, sadly. <laughs> because the, problem, the biggest problem is because he wants this money that um, the Panasars have hold of at the moment, and Vinny's got it. Now, Vinny and Kirat annoyed a group of youths in uh, the shop. Again, and this is over to you, because this was a big yeah. Kirat moment, and you love Kirat, okay. so please, go off. Yeah, that was a lovely moment, because Kirat basically put that beautiful speech about uh, hate crime in the past to his family, and they, you know, they've been able to thrive, and they still have uh, one corner shop, apparently, or whatever. They, you know, they've, they've built this empire the around empire. them. Um, and he, he did make a really lovely speech where he said, you know, mm. the, his headwear is, a, is, a, is his crown, it's, so I don't see it yeah. as an insult for you to make fun of me for wearing it i see it as as something to be precious and to be behold um which is a wonderful moment loved it great um mm. the guy the white guy who was trying to steal their eight can of fosters <laughs> so basically mm. he gave this huge speech over this alcoholic uh white guy um just looked at him like a gormless fiend so it's like what uh, what you're my, using words i don't understand my brothers are gonna hear about that right <laughs> And, and then yeah. Kurt was like, get out, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we... And we thought that was the end of it. We, we thought did. that was the end of this, of this, of this, of this idiot. But this is but where, then... this is, well, this is where Kurt decided that he needed to team up with Ben because he realised that his name, the Panasar name, wasn't big in Walford. Which, okay, yes, I get that, that makes some sense. But then surely just, maybe you should start small and build yourself up rather than just be like, oh, I'm going to get Ben Mitchell on my team and everyone will love us. Month, like, as little as like a couple of months ago was being told by Danny Harcastle that they had no stand in Oh, Wolford Danny Harcastle has got no relevance to anything anymore. It kind of look, who's been kind of double-crossed by Phil and Ben going, yeah, well, your name doesn't mean anything anyway. You know, so I don't <laughs> think that necessarily means anything. But you know that he's had some dealings with the Mitchells in the past. Or you, well, okay, You're yeah, the only, but I've forgotten about Danny Harcastle until you, bring, until you bring him up. But I don't, you know, I didn't particularly like Danny Harcos, but then again, it's probably linked no. to my absolute, absolute hate for any gangster storylines yeah, on right. EastEnders. Actually, this is what I wanted to. <laughs> this is what I wanted to ask you. Okay, mm. you're very vocal about this whole hate of gangster stuff, but I would kind of ask, like, so I mean, where are you in, in classic EastEnders at the moment? What year are we in? We're in 1996. And what gangster stuff's going on at the moment? Because the 90s None whatsoever. was a massive... Oh, I don't believe you. There was no, a massive no, era of gangster only, stuff in the 90s. The only kind of, you could argue, slightly gangstery is that the owner of the nightclub, uh, I forget what it's called, which is annoying, but anyway, um, the owner of the nightclub that's just opened in the square is dating Peggy, and the Mitchell brothers are suspicious of him because he's helping drug dealers deal within that's the square. That's quite gangstery. That's not gangstery. It's just one club owner You don't owner think drug guy dealing... Probably- but, but why is drug dealing gangster though? Why can't you mean Tiff? <laughs> well, I tiff, don't know what you I don't know what I don't know tiff, what you do on your time on your time off from work. But <laughs> where I live, that's quite gangstery. <laughs> well, only only if you're like very high up on the whole pitch thing. But I wouldn't say like you clearly are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say drug dealing. I would say drug dealing is a story where what well, Hollyoaks is actually doing quite well at the moment, and Coronation Street are so, trying to replicate. And that's what the county lines type thing, where they're trying to get like young people involved with dealing so the, so the, the lower run people are the ones getting in trouble rather than the higher up ones that so i wouldn't say that was de- necessarily gangster stuff i would just I say just, that's a real life story which uh, which is I fine just, so i tick that on my box <laughs> <laughs> i just think that gangster stuff is so it's so like it's very east enders it's there's all the mitchells from the day that they walked onto the square w- were dealing with gangster stuff they all uh, gangsters i don't understand why but not so blatantly such a bad thing but not well, so blatantly I, I, it's I so don't blatant agree. It's, it's, <laughs> but it, no it really isn't honestly like dense gangster stuff like you occasionally saw him doing a few dodgy dealings where he'd sell a few cassette tapes behind the bar illegally which he got from maybe someone a little what, in bit the 80s? Up. Yeah, in the 80s. And in the 90s, I mean, Phil and... Yes, you're right. Phil and Grant have a few dark secrets in the closet. But for instance, for argument's sake, like Phil has this ridiculous amount of money in a safe in his house now. In, in, 19, in 1996, he's in trouble because he can't afford to pay a fine that he got with the court because he p- didn't change an engine in someone's car, which he got sued over. <laughs> you know, right. so he's got a few kind of 
fingers in some kind of naughty pies in it's the like 90s. 25 years ago, though. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's but, oh, come on. Yeah, his debt's been paid off by but, now. No, but this is... No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm saying that as an example, that in the 90s, maybe there was a little bit of gangster stuff in EastEnders, but it wasn't literally this loud neon sign that f- flashed in your face every five seconds to say, this is the main story on EastEnders this week. Now... Every bloody week, it's gangster, 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 gangster. And it has to do with Phil Mitchell. And it's just an excuse to shoehorn the Mitchells into a story one way or another. And they just think, oh, what's an easy out? Oh, I know. We'll just have them do a heist. Oh, I know. We'll just have them do a gangster story. And it's like, no. I would, I'd, I'd, Fine, if you want to put the Mitchells into a story, I don't mind. I don't care. Put Ben and Callum into a story. Have them, you know, make out on a fairground ride or something like that. Fine, I don't care. Do that, though, instead of just constantly having them launder money or steal some cars or break up into a bank building to to get some money from a petty cash box or whatever. I don't care. I don't want that. I just want subtlety. (laughs) And that's that's my main argument. And that's that's probably where I'm coming from. I just don't like the fact that it's just being thrown in my face all the time. Anyway, I've ranted too much. You say your piece. I mean, it's that's fine. I just, <laughs> I just, I just don't. It doesn't. I don't. I mean, the simple fact is, it doesn't bother me. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not bothered by the by the gangster stuff because I don't. I don't think I find it as wearing as you do, and I don't. It's the way that the Mitchells, for me, my memory of the Mitchells always has been. You know, I don't remember the '90s being like. If you think back over Phil's storylines over the years, aside from who shot him and Sharon Gate. His biggest stories have mainly been about like him getting involved with gangsters and explosions and car crashes, like the Steve Owen stuff, the Jack Dalton stuff. I'm just naming stuff off the top of my head here. The um, Johnny Allen stuff. You know, it's all been very, very gangster related. So I don't see how this is. I mean, yeah, uh, we're talking about huge differences in sort of storyline and quality. I understand that, but. I don't see how why it's particularly an issue these days for gangster stuff to still be prevalent in the show because it, I feel like out of all the soaps, East Dennis has always been the gangstery show. Mm. I do highly recommend you watch The Mitchells in the nineties. I really do because I I agree I agree with what you're saying that I've always had this kind of image of the Mitchells being a little bit you know down dirty and kind of gangster i hate using the term gangster this we might as well just call this episode gangster gangster weekly gangster weekly i don't know they just had there was more to them than just that in the 90s and maybe when we're st- when we start watching the classics when we start moving up into the 2000s and the 2010s maybe then we'll come back to this we'll put a pin in this right now and we'll come back <laughs> yeah. to this in episode 462 and i'll say rob you know what i'm sorry you were right. The Mitchells have always been gangster from 2001 to 2019. <laughs> and, and, then, my, and my hol- my hologram will nod along. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, essentially, what happens is that Kira and Vinny annoyed at the start of uh, Monday's episode come back mm. as Vinny is on his way to the Archers uh, with all this money and basically did, hold him up, don't they? They did. And did you think Did you think at that point that it was going to be a little bit like, you know, in Anchorman when all the TV channels all get together and have that big fight in the alleyway? That they, you thought <laughs> that, that like, <laughs> like, so the three brothers were going to get together and then it'll be the Panasars all together and then there'll be the Mitchells all together and they'd all kind of like have this three-way kind of fisticuffs on the I was square. sort of hoping, what I was hoping it was leading up to was sort of Phil and Suki arriving and sorting everything out. I wouldn't, oh. I wouldn't if that, that that's kind of what I was hoping was going to happen. But uh, Vinny ran into uh, the Vic through mm. the cellar and found Callum just sat there having a pint after work, as you know. And then uh, basically says, Callum, I need a favour. And then after that, the gangsters are gone. We have no idea at yeah. all how Callum dealt with these gangsters. Did he eat them? <laughs> did, he, <laughs> did he, like, arrest them all single handedly? Because this was quite a large gang that was following Vinny at this time. Yeah, and all off screen. We have zero clue how Callum dealt with it because I refuse to believe. <laughs> <laughs> the Callum PC Highway could have dealt with an entire gang all on his own. I don't believe it for a second. I don't know. I just think one flash of the badge and one audio dub of him going, I'm a police officer, then he yeah. would have been out And then he was literally... Yeah, movies. and then... <laughs> the li- li- later, him and Vinny meet in the str- in-, in the street, and Callum's just strolling down the road like, "Oh, it's a good day's work. Yeah, I've sorted it for you, mate. Don't worry about it." 
he's, he's ridiculous. Like, he's like the best and the worst cop in some kind of weird combination, isn't he? He's I think what, what happens is, as, lo- as long as the camera isn't on him, Callum is the best cop <laughs> in the entire world. As long as we're not watching. He's like one of those sort of things like, you know, oh, I can't do it if you're watching me. So <laughs> It's funny the way that Corit, um reacted to... Vinny's basically Vinny's way of getting out of their trouble by saying, you know, I I you I asked Callum to help me because Ben didn't seem that fussed whatsoever. Like Ben was like, oh yeah, Callum no. knows everything I get up to. Standard Callum, wasn't mm. it? Yeah. But Corit was like, how dare you? It really went off on one with Vinny, which I mm. thought was a bit unfair because Vinny was clearly frightened. Well, especially seeing as though Kira accused Vinny of being the one that annoyed the gang, the brothers in the first place, <laughs> yeah, when really. it wasn't Vinny whatsoever. <laughs> Rewind the tape clip. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny said not one word in the shop other than, are you just letting him go? <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah. Kira was the one that really instigated the whole thing. But you know, according to Kira, it was all Vinny's fault. Yeah, I know. I, thought, I really felt bad for Vinny, actually. I mean, I, it takes a lot for Kirit to upset me, but tonight, or, or that night I was Ooh. a bit like oh no credit I've seen that's why you're annoyed about this I, week it is Kira's upset you they turned my opinion on him I think it might be an idea to uh, maybe open this whole gangster discussion up to our lovely listeners because clearly we're not going to agree on we're, we're not going to agree on the matter what do you think about the prevalence of gangsters in EastEnders now or at any point during the show's history Email me or Alex, robwalfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwalfordweekly at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah, or comment we'll below. Fight it out. If you're watching yes. on YouTube, comment below. Absolutely. I want, And we'll read them out next week. And we'll have mm. a, Because I'm sure there'll be another gangster story next week. So if there is, we'll, we'll, we'll throw in the comments what you guys think. But yeah, I'm genuinely... In, maybe I am a minority on this. Because I do, you know, I do read... Maybe I am. Well, I read comments on Twitter and on Instagram, not just on what people send to us, but I see on there. And I, 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 get, I get a feeling that, that some people love it, some people hate it. It's the Marmite subject of EastEnders. Mm. And normally I like Marmite, but I don't like it this time. So, oh, I don't uh, like Marmite. How weird. So we have opposing nah. views on Marmite. And Let's know your views on Marmite as well while you're at it. <laughs> do you lay it thick on the toast or thin on the toast? Or do you just put it, on, put it in the bin where it belongs? <laughs> how dare you? How? Yeast. Very What's wrong with you? Yeast, Yeast extract. Full of B12. For us vegans. That peanut butter. For us vegans, B12 is a. You can essential get vegan thing. peanut butter, can't you? All peanut butter is vegan. Do you know what? Let's have a quick chat about Kat and Phil because their love oh, is blossoming yeah. as well. I mean, like I say, it felt like love week this week on these tenders. <laughs> Two weeks too late because Valentine's Day is coming <sighs> on. Phil finally admitted to Ben that he's seeing Kat because Ben wanted to you know, do something to cap for dobbing us in. And Bet feels like, no, I don't think you'll be doing that because her and I are having an, you know, having a sexual affair. Liaison, um, yeah. yeah. And ben... I think Ben reacted the way that the whole viewers, uh, that I've been reacting to this story for, for since it started. Yeah, well, I say he did. And you! <laughs> <laughs> Scraping the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Mind your neck in, Dad. Cat and Phil. Even Kim had <sighs> some questions about it too. Oh, the, the Alan Titchmarsh analogy I, was <laughs> on another level. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm seeing quite a lot of people that are actually really enjoying this Cat and Phil thing. And it's just, for me, it's just nuts. I think the problem for me is I kind of, I'm really thirsty for a reason as to why Cat is going there. If I understood, I mean, Phil, I understand because Cat's essentially an attractive woman and who is up for it. And in the eyes of a Neanderthal like Phil, <laughs> that's all that's really needed, isn't it? Mm. That's all he needs. It's just mm. like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But his Cat is a bit more of a complex character than that usually. I kind of, I want to know why she's gone for someone like Phil. When she was talking to Kim about it this week, she was saying that um, it's exciting. And again, we're sort of reminded that Phil is an absolute Adonis in the bedroom. Um, or on the car, or on the floor, or on the staircase, <laughs> or wherever they end up doing it. Any flat surface. Any they, flat surface. Not surprised... even flats. No, I'm, su- I'm surprised they haven't done it on Big Mo, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> like, she just did, wow. Like, play dead, well, Mo. She's just unconscious on the, <laughs> she's just unconscious on the sofa after one too many beers oh. i just i mean after friday i was sort of a little bit more fascinated by them but it's just it's just such a random pairing and i mm. think the only reason i'm not with it as much as other people are because a lot of people are actually really enjoying it and finding it incredibly funny which i can see that viewpoint mm. i just maybe i'm wanting more out of it than was there in the first place I yeah. just I'm I just want to know why Kat is sleeping with Phil. Do you think the writers have written it for it to be funny? Because I get that they've written it to be a little bit, you know, they're sneaking behind people's back. They're almost like two school children kind of having their first, you know, <sighs> almost like an affair, isn't it? If you think about it, like they they kind of do it behind everyone's backs and no one really uh. knows. They told a few select people every time, every time people were told, they all laugh at them. 
So it's almost I don't know. Do the writers want us to oppose this relationship? And but an actual I fact don't think we're now so because it's not even a case of one is like Phil especially is treating Cat especially badly. I mean, yeah, he heard her um, sort of slagging her off to Ben, but that was in defence of their secret more than anything else, wasn't it? It wasn't that that was his honest opinion of Cat at that moment. I don't think it was mm-hmm. just him trying to put Ben off the scent. It's really weird because I just want to know why any of it's happening. It's like it's, it's like I said a couple of weeks ago. I feel like we missed a couple of episodes where they went from sort of being not really liking each other and finding each other irritating more than anything else to being unable to keep their hands off each other. And that's the only thing that's been missing for me. I like, I quite like the idea of the two of them because they had to do all that, um, sorry, high stuff, um, sort of like because they had to begrudgingly work with each other all the time and they were, and then they sort of begrudgingly started quite liking each other. That would have been fine. I would have, un- I would have understood that more than what we've got at the minute, which is just, it seems that we went from point A to point C without visiting point B. I mean, okay, yes, I think he was quite upset by the way Ben had reacted. Callum reacted quite unfairly too, but then stepped back and said, oh, you know, Phil, if whoever you fall in love with, it's fine. And Phil was like, oh, go away, Callum. <laughs> and it was like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, but it seems, it seems quite telling that Phil and Kat both are in, almost embarrassed by their relationship, but like their relationship, like the, the, the way they feel about each other. And they get quite hurt if one of the other... Yeah. says or does anything against the other you know says anything behind their back and so yeah it's, it's it seems funny, isn't it? yeah it seems now that they especially after after fridays they they both really like each other mm. and it's just it just seems mad to me like i i'm not against it per se i just don't understand how we've got to this point i think is my only issue is my mm. only issue with it and like i say maybe i'm trying to read in more into it than what the story is supposed to be because you know if it was something like you know cat hit 50 this year didn't she so maybe it was <laughs> She'll if love it's you a for case <laughs> well she did you know if it was something along the lines of you know cat not absolutely hating the fact that she's hit that she's hit that big number so was wanting to recapture some of her youth where she would go out have a good time with with men left right and center mm. as opposed to, or maybe she's trying to forget about all the stress of the kids at home or you know trying to get over cush so she's on the rebound anything like that as you know there's a whole plethora of reasons as to why she might want to sleep with someone like phil but we're not being given any of them other than the fact that he's great in bed and it's a bit exciting yeah. now even that in itself is fine but it's not being given as a solid motive as to why it's happening no I mean, I welcome it in the sense that it means that now the Sharon and Phil show has ended and it means Sharon can move on and we can perhaps get that story or a story that you you mentioned a couple of weeks ago. That is maybe she finds love somewhere else. And again, he'll probably Mm. end up dying at the hands of Phil somehow. But it doesn't doesn't matter. It means that Sharon can move on. It means Sharon can have a uh, story. It doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic story either. She can just maybe start her own business the same way Kim has because obviously she's losing the Vic now as well. So what's what's Sharon got for for the show? Where I'm just wondering if she's just going to live in the same. They're going to do like a flat swap, and so the Carters move back to the Vic. Have, they can't have Linda live in the pub, surely to God. I don't. We've had the, I mean, we've had this discussion yes, endless times. Yes, it's like yes. Linda is an alcoholic, so the whole reason they left the pub in the first place was because <laughs> Linda can't live with alcohol. But, <laughs> but they're, the but they're packing. Thing. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? I mean, talking about Linda and Mick's story, uh, they're packing up now, getting themselves ready to go because Mick mm. feels like. You know, this is his opportunity to move on. He even says to Mitch this week, you know, I don't know how you've moved on from Chantel. You know, Mitch was like, who? And uh, yeah. you know, we, were all, we, we were all kind of thinking, well, yeah, that happened, didn't it? Um, So I guess they must be, Linda must be living in the Vic, unless they're keeping both properties going and Linda's going to live. I mean, it makes, it makes, I well, suppose it could make. They can't otherwise, though, should they? Well, I don't know. I mean, it could, they could rent the flat above the Vic or they could do what we said that they might do and that's they hire a manager. The manager could then live above the Vic and Linda and Mick stay living in their flat. But then why would they be packing away stuff? I don't. God knows. We'll find out, I guess. I just think it's a waste of Sharon of Sharon having the Vic back. You know, it was, mm-hmm. I feel like it was supposed, when she got it back at the end of series one, I feel like it was supposed to be like this really sort of iconic sort of story moment where Sharon's back where, you know, her roots are and back where the show started. And then it's kind of just like it was sort of all tainted by the whole Ian story. Mm-hmm. And now she, and now it's like that story's done. So now Sharon's out of the Vic, which seems like a shame. I feel like Sharon as a sole landlady could have been amazing because we're not really had her behind We've, she's been in and out of the Vic over the years as Sharon. It's all been story based rather than her that being her actual place to be. Mm. So I think it's a shame that we we haven't had 
sort of sole Sharon ownership over the Vic, but it doesn't look like we're getting it this time either. Uh, no. Never mind. Number five years, I'm sure she'll be back there. <laughs> I mean, we kind of saw it coming, didn't we? Because all we had with Sharon working behind the Vic was just Sharon. There was no staff kind of implemented. You never really saw Tracy there. You know what I mean? They never kind of built any anything up who for Sharon. Is this, who is that woman that was in the kitchen? This random well, woman. Yes. When, <laughs> the, when, Vinny was walk, when Vinny was walking through to try and to get away from the gang, from the gang, this random woman was in the kitchen cooking. I want to know who she is. Well, I wonder if Sharon just lets anyone, it's like a free for all in that pub now she's yeah. like oh, i don't own it anymore make your own drinks make your own food yeah. just do what you like <laughs> I don't care. random woman <laughs> watching her tell you. again a wonderful moment when Vinny was walking through the pub uh with the social distancing filming which we will talk about actually at the end of the yes. show because uh, a video was released on the eastenders official social media channels where they showed you some of the techniques they used for for, for social distancing filming this week uh, and rob and i are going to talk about that at the end of the show for i don't want to gossip so that's something to listen out for later on on the show however we are now playing a game rob this week i hope you've got your brain in gear because it's time to play Mm -hmm. mastermind okay so anyone who's not familiar with the tv quiz show mastermind rob is going to get two minutes to answer as many questions on his specialist (gasps) subject we'll find out what his specialist subject is in a minute i i can't imagine what it could be on an eastenders podcast i really cannot um emma dale (laughs) <laughs> who knows Rob it's completely up to you but um as you oh you're sh- just gonna punch <laughs> pop questions off the top of your head about any given subject yeah. we no what we discussed earlier when the microphones are off perhaps could be your specialist subject <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> Um, right but we have to do it we have to set ourselves up formally here so here we go uh, cue right. the music Name? Robert. <laughs> wow, like, this is not start, a good start. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Tripping over my words already. Do you know, uh, in a GCSE, Rob- you get two points for putting your name on the top of the paper, so you've already failed. Explains a lot. <laughs> Explains a lot about my grades. Um, <clears throat> let's try that again. Name? Robert Innes. Occupation? Writer, podcaster. And your special subject? EastEnders. Right, Robert. Oh dear, yeah. Alexander. Go on. <laughs> you have two minutes on Genuinely your Genuinely nervous. Two minutes on your specialist subject of EastEnders, written by the way by our fan Sophie Olford. Thank you so much for sending these questions in. So I'm gonna go. thank you after I've heard the questions. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Two minutes starting from now. What was the name of the shop when EastEnders started in nineteen eighty five? Uh, the minute mark pass. What breed of dog was Ethel's dog Willie? Uh, a terrier? No, it's a pug. Which character helped Tanya to bury Max alive in 2008? Uh, Jake? No, it was uh, Sean Slater. What character, oh, of course it was. What character ran through carrying the Olympic torch in 2012? Billy Mitchell. Who was the first character to go to prison for the murder of Lucy Bill? Max Branning? No, Jake Stone. Oh, uh... What was the name of the spin-off for Cat and Elfie in 2017? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Deadwater. No. Redwater. Yes, I'll give you that. How did Hunter Owen die in 2019? Shot by police. Correct. What was the name of Arthur Fowler's mistress in 1992 to 1993? He- Mrs. Hewitt. Correct. When Pete Bill left the square in 1993, what was the name of the character he left with? No idea. It was Rose Chapman. Which character was driving the car that killed Tiffany in 1998? Frank Butcher. Which object was used to kill Saskia Duncan? An ashtray. Correct. Can you name all of Jim Branning's children? Max, Carol, uh, and his sister, who I can't remember the name of. Rose, Lily? No. No. Max and Carol is all I've got. Derek, April, Carol, Susie, Max and Jack. Which character bought the Queen Vic from Grant Mitchell for £5? Uh, Dan Sullivan. Correct. What was the name of the nightclub when it was under the ownership of Sharon Watts? Oh, crystals. Pass. Who delivered... (laughs) I've started to our finish. Who delivered (laughs) Sonia's baby in 2000? Uh, Mo Butcher. That's no, Mo, not... No, yeah, no, no. I, I knew you meant. It wasn't Mo Butcher, yeah. no. <laughs> Mo Butcher no, was a while back. Long dead by then, but no. It's <sighs> really right. well, well done, Rob. Some of those questions I, stumbled you. I, I must admit, I thought the first question you'd get. <laughs> I thought the first question I'd get. Um, I'll be honest. 
That's the only one you passed on, actually. And the answer was first till last. The uh, I didn't shot. get no, I didn't. I didn't know that at yes. all. Uh, no. The rest of the questions you got, Rob, you got eleven points and one pass. Well done. Eleven's very good. If you watch yeah. Mastermind currently, about eight is about a good score. So yeah. You're welcome. There, there you, you go, go. Rob. Thank you very well much. Done. In which case, I will now say thank you for those questions, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sophie. Wonderful questions, as always. This is the second game Sophie's actually uh, submitted to us, and we've played both Ooh. of them, and they've both been success. So, uh, And you've done very well in them, so you should thank Sophie and encourage her to write I more will. questions to Sophie, us. Sophie, write more questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can send me questions to play with Rob, alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. You can send Rob questions to play with me, robwolfordweekly at gmail.com. Come up with game concepts. Come up with... If you've just got questions that you want to throw at us, that's absolutely no problem whatsoever. And don't be afraid to steal ideas from other game shows. We're not afraid of it. Go, go for it. Not, go on challenge and nick whatever you like. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fill your boots. And that was Mastermind. So we're going back into the wacky world of the Foxes yet again. Where oh, good. Chelsea, Chelsea, after that meal, remember we discussed a couple of weeks ago that Lucas had got a burger, chips, milkshake, a couple of DVDs, oh, yeah. nice night in. That won Chelsea over, apparently. <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> we thought there'd be more, but no, no, Chelsea is easy to didn't win over. Didn't even need to get her a heart-shaped pizza. None no, of it. <laughs> no. We did say at the time that we thought that Chelsea was quite easily manipulated because she was convinced to traffic drugs after like a, mm. maybe a week of being with her boyfriend, yeah. Kevin. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, so Chelsea is now defending her dad, saying that, you know, he's a bit bad, he's a bit naughty, but, you know, n- not as... It's misunderstood. He's a bit misunderstood. He's, you know, no one really understands him. And, you know, we should kind of look at it from his point of view. <laughs> and Denise is adamant that Jack needs to know what's going on with Chelsea and that Jack could use this perhaps as a reason to get back into the police force because he's lying to his daughter, telling her that he still works there while he just sits in the cafe drinking coffee, <laughs> kind of, you know, no. hiding out. I mean, if anything was going to make this story I, I honestly like what this story needed was jack <laughs> jack's oh, no. involvement excellent uh, when has anybody throughout the whole history of eastenders ever said the line thank god jack's here <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's been winning me over these past few months bit by bit he's been coming into it doing more and more which i've kind of agreed to quite a lot i like the relationship between him and denise and then he had his kind of moment yet again where he decided to be a prat and tell max about you mm-hmm. know linda and mick and so he deservedly is being, you know, investigated in, within the police force. I mean, I hope that yes. Jack takes Callum down with him. <laughs> That's the only thing I want to happen. Yeah, that would be quite good. <laughs> but, All be forgiven. Yeah, so effect. I mean, I'd, oh, Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. I mean, to be fair, Lucas wasn't even in this week, and all the madness showed that the madness doesn't just need Lucas to be there. They're, <laughs> all the characters are quite capable of running this insanity on their own. But the basic thing is this week is that Denise uh, wants to tell Jack what's going on because she's out of she's running out of options as to how to resolve this situation about mm. this dangerous drug dealer that is liable to kill them all at any moment. <laughs> and so says to Chelsea, "Right, I'm going to tell Jack," and tells Jack and. Uh, Jack's immediate response is right. I'm going to start. A, I'm going to get talk to my boss, and I'm going to start a big old police investigation, and everything will be absolutely fine, and I'll get my job back. Hurrah! Chelsea predictably doesn't agree with that uh, level of thinking because Chelsea tries to persuade. Jack, it's, Chelsea is just. She tries to persuade Jack to sleep with her in exchange for not going to the police about the story. Now, fortunately, Jack has enough aware of all about him to realise what she's trying to do. I I would argue this is this is pretty much page one Chelsea from when she was first in the soap. It seems like the sort of thing that she because she's got something that she needs and she's not bothered about who she will hurt on in the meantime to get that need itched, scratched, whatever the phrase is. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Like it's. Yeah. I mean, well, that is that's it really. I, I mean, Chelsea tried her you know, the cards that she is normally dealt, that she likes to manipulate people through her sexuality didn't work because Jack doesn't want to upset Denise. And so then she just uses blind threats by saying like, well, yeah. you know, you knew all about this from the beginning, which he didn't. So I'm going to tell the police no. that you are corrupt just like, and you, you know, were involved with the drug dealing, which he wasn't. Which and he has no proof of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so if you tell the police, I'll, you know, I'll get you in even more trouble than you're in already, which she won't be able to because there's absolutely zero evidence, like you say, for her to do it. So yet but again, Jack seemed quite convinced by that. Yeah, didn't yeah. So he's det- Detective Jack. <laughs> investigated himself and thought, yeah, I'm probably better off out of it then. Uh, yeah, yeah just, actually, I mean, you're right. 
<laughs> this story is just tying itself in knots and <sighs> I mean, it's really convoluted just to introduce one character into the programme, isn't it? This is like when they tried to get rid of Ace Turner for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> so much effort is being put into this this story, all for what? The benefit of bringing Chelsea onto the show? It's nuts. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do when they bring Nancy Carter back. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. God only knows. <laughs> what, like, is she going to be, I don't know, is she going to be somehow tangled up in some kind of like... Some- She's going to turn into a gun-toting lesbian. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's like a religious freak. Yeah, just nuts. Why can't they just... Why can't they just have brought Chelsea back in just on the premise that she wanted to All be right, back mom. with her family? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, mum. Just mad. They started something and they just don't know what to do with it anymore. And I'm a I bit mean, worried. Th- Lucas, is, Lucas has been in it now for a lot longer than I thought he was coming Same. into it. I thought, I swear I read somewhere that he was just coming back for a few episodes and he's been here for about three months now. <laughs> but no one on the square seems to know he's there either, other than the, no. the foxes. It seems that's soon going to change, which takes the story into a whole other <laughs> direction of madness, yeah. which we'll discuss next week, I'm, I'm thinking. But, I know, yeah, uh, we don't want to spoil it for, for the listeners who don't like spoilers, but I mean... It's, itself. It's like someone tipped over a glass of water. It's just that kind of story. It's just like yeah. no amount of mopping up with bounty kitchen roll is going to tidy up this mess. Other toilet rolls are available. They certainly um. are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's not much more we can say other than it is what it is it is what it is well, but we say but the that thing every is, time though, it, it, it is, is what it is, is. <laughs> it's one of those weeks though that like essentially it started with Denise saying right I need to tell Jack that's because this is the situation that we're in and the week ends in Chelsea apparently persuading Jack not to do anything so effectively it's just sort of gone around in this little aspect of the story has just gone around in one little circle and resolved itself so we're nowhere close we're nowhere no. near to it was like if the story's going along the road it's just gone and visited a welcome break and now it's back <laughs> on the road again <laughs> tiff is working in the nightclub as a what do you call them like a an assistant hooker uh, no it's not <laughs> but weirdly the guy was like offering her money to like answer weird questions like what's your favorite color or <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's some that's some fetish i haven't discovered in, <laughs> yeah. my, if, in my search yet if you were an animal which unicorn would you be you know that kind of like yeah. nonsense <laughs> that a drunk mad I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure that when i was watching this guy like tell her ask her whether she was a natural redhead and just laughing raucously at it i'm sure that this guy has been in the club before being an idiot he looked familiar. I'm sure we've seen either that actor playing a similar character or they've, t- they've gone to the effort of casting this guy as the one character that comes into the club and causes <laughs> issues and then leaves again. Well, he just you... looked familiar to me. Do you know what I mean? Well, one, at least there's continuity, so I'm enjoying that. But two, what, 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 what title would he be then on the credits? Drunk White Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing. I, all, the only options I can go from my mind is you've got to put the bleep machine over, so I can't. <laughs> I'm ready. My finger is hovering over the button. Dicking bar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd agree with that. That's the polite version. How, yeah. would, how would they put So D asterisk asterisk K in bar. Dicking bar, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's all right. You know, he's d- no different to any other kind of. I mean, we can all be d- when we've had a few drinks inside of us, can't we? Can. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm very respectful. In fact, if anything, I'm Are you? <laughs> I've, <Yeah. laughs> seen, I've seen pictures of a night out, Rob, from you, especially your <laughs> birthday. So I think we can all have our moments. Bless him. Wow. I'm trying to think of what she is. What is Tiff? What does Tiff do? It's... Is it? I, I, would, I mean, I think the the polite term is into it is she's like a personal shopper for alcohol. Isn't hostess. She? She's a hostess. Hostess with the mostess. That's it. She's a hostess. And Dottie is doing exactly what I predicted she'd do, which is stand behind the bar and tell Tiff <laughs> to go sort out the raucous drunks. I knew she was going to do this, <laughs> and, and then, then threaten to raise the rent. <laughs> I know, but what authority does what? she raise the to raise the rent for? Because none she, whatsoever. Why no. is Dottie suddenly the landlady of Dot's house? It was such a false and threat. And Sonia's house. Yeah, exactly. It was such a false. I'm threat. raising the rent. Oh. Oh, right, yeah, okay, Dotty. Surely Tiff has Sonia on her mobile phone. Like, all she has to do is say, right, okay, then. Do, 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 do. Hello, Sonia. Yeah. Hello, you know, I'm just meditating. What you want? <laughs> like, yeah, you I'm, know. Dr- I'm under a waterfall. What yeah, can I help yeah, yeah. you with? I'm washing um, my face in a river. I don't know what they do in... <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when you're in India? <laughs> it's sweat a lot. It's quite hot. Oh, right. Basically, the whole thing went exactly as we predicted it would. Keegan doesn't didn't find out about really what was going on until he came into work 
and uh, to pick up his pay or look at the rotor or whatever, and sees Tiff being sort of hassled by these guys. Seemed quite capable of dealing with it, but Keegan went into typical Keegan mode and was like, my girlfriend's not doing that. <laughs> to which Dottie, I thought quite sensibly, so I ran to him and said, yeah, would you not be a caveman, mate? Like, yeah. she, she's her own woman, she could do what she likes, which I thought was fair enough. Mm. And then by the end of the week, Dottie has sort of flashed the cash that Tiff's earned said that she won't raise the rent, flashed this £70, pound, which in London doesn't seem that much, under Keegan's nose. And by the end of the week, he's like, well, you know, 70 quid, 70 quid, so I don't see much of an issue with it. Yeah, I know. I, Effect- I, effectively. Dottie did call Keegan out for his, um, you know, his masculinity, trying to try yes. push himself onto... Toxic masculinity. Heteronormative yeah. behaviour. Oh, look at you. <laughs> and, um, I mean, he did seem a little bit upset also that he wasn't like the breadwinner of the house didn't he like he wasn't earning all the money he he's i think does he see himself as like he gets the money and tiff stays at home and has the babies kind of like probably do you probably think? Mm. uh probably he's, he's, a lot of young a lot of young lads like that exist these days you know? oh, it's, absolutely. Not that, it's not like it's not like crazy to think i know a few people keegan's age who have got that sort of that sort of attitude about them mm. and it's like oh so for someone like that i think Keegan, because I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility for us to say that he's sort of developed into a little bit of a caveman in that respect, hasn't he? Yeah. In terms of his character with Tiff, like because they've had this conversation, they've had to have, they've had to have this conversation a few times, haven't they? Where Keegan has sort of, I think he thinks that he's doing, he he sees it as doing what's best for Tiff, whilst Tiff is like, well, do you know what? Actually, I'm more than capable of making my own decisions. Thank you very much. Which I think is quite a nice little free shot in their relationship. It mm. seems quite natural and quite subtle. Um, <laughs> How dare you? That's a dirty word. <laughs> um, so I, I don't mind this little thing. that It's almost like a character point that their relationship has. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for Keegan to suddenly be confronted with the issue of Tiff getting money and taking advantage of drunk blokes because they are stupid enough to flash their money at somebody who flirts with them a little bit. Mm. It's a genius move on Tiff's perspective, I think. I don't think it's going to go very well for very much longer. I just but. had a th- I just had a thought that wasn't the deal with Ruby between Ruby and Dotty that Ruby gets ninety percent and Dotty gets ten percent of the money that's earned by Tiff. Was yeah. that right a couple of weeks ago? Something like that. And Dotty's doing absolutely nothing and to earn this money. Yeah. So, so for this for argument's sake, then that she the money that she gave to Keegan to kind of convince him that Tiff should carry on working <laughs> was seventy yeah. pounds. That means yeah. Tiff earned seven hundred pounds that night. That guy paid seven hundred pounds. Surely not. Well, on the deal that oh, no, she's I don't, got with Ruby, I, it, pro- it probably was. It probably wasn't just that guy, though, was it? Mm, okay, so, fair enough. Tiff did say it was one evening, but still seven hundred pounds. I mean, I wouldn't mind dressing up in a skirt and like dyeing my hair, you know, red. And <laughs> I'd, I'd pay seven hundred pound to see you in a dress, Would in you? A dress with red hair. Yeah, god, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, do you think there's a story there where because there's a lot of groups now? I was funnily, I don't know why I started going down this rabbit hole, but there's a lot of groups out there where men are like meeting up and like starting a kind of like a masculinity lost group where they feel like they're like men are kind of like being pulled pushed over by women now and it's not 50 50 in this world because it's because you know men are now becoming like the minority and women are now becoming the stronger sex and so they're beginning to get afraid that they're losing it do you think they they could do like a a story with keegan Um, where he feels that way and he kind of is convinced Sounds a bit deep for current East Enders. It's a bit, it's a, it's a bit niche, isn't it? I admit, it's a very uh, it's niche a quite story. Niche. It's a very niche story. But I quite like the idea. That's... Because I actually, I, I think I know somebody who's got that level of thinking, actually. I know I know the sort of person that you mean. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether they'd be able to get that across convincingly. <laughs> No. Be interesting, but no, probably not. I only think that way because I think Keegan can be what well, we showed this week as well, by the way, that Dottie just showed put money on the table and he was like, Duh, yeah, good idea. Yeah, he, I'll be all right. Yeah, he seems quite easily led, quite easily manipulated. I mean, when he was first introduced, he was a bit of a bully type character. You know what I mean? So I feel like yeah. that that's a trait that you could still have with Keegan, that he could somehow yeah. be. I mean, I feel I feel like someone like Dottie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just I feel like Dottie is the sort of person that could manipulate Keegan in her sleep. Yeah, you know, he's just—he's just got—he's—he's he's just. I think quite—he's got because he's got such a very—I'd uh, argue almost quite a simple view of the world. You know, yeah. Um, as soon as they seem to have completely abandoned this whole racism story <laughs> that Keegan was involved with, it's gone completely. I haven't mentioned this in months. So well, we haven't seen Di Gaffney gone. in a while, have we? Well, he, and God is he missed. Uh, <laughs> 
It's um, yeah. So I'm assuming that this is sort of Keegan's direction. But then you know, if we're hearing rumours that Maisie Smith may be on her way out, then who knows where it's going? Yes, only rumours though. So we shouldn't. Hopefully, I mean, we we've discussed it a little bit again a few weeks ago. Um, but it's only a rumour. So hopefully, hopefully it's only a rumour because I mean. First of all, I love the relationship between Keegan and Tiff. I think it's a lovely to see a young couple on the soap. We've discussed it before. Yeah. It's nice to see the troubles and it's trials just a and tribulations. Couple, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Even with this kind of, especially with this story where Tiff and Keegan are just trying to survive by doing what they can. Yeah, yeah it's lovely to have a little bit of normality amongst yeah, uh, gangster laid and soap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. It's not the most fascinating story that EastEnders has ever done, but at the same time, really? it's a sort of story. I think that uh, I'm tuned uh, into yeah. it. I'm see, again, but again, that's that's just me. Oh, but what I mean, I don't mind it. But that's what I'm trying to say is that it's it might not be the most sort. It's not up there with the likes of you know who shot Phil or anything in terms oh, of no, gripping no. storyline. But what I meant was, it's nice to have that sort of sort of normal human being story mm. amongst all the sort of madness that's going on around mm. around them. I wish they'd do now. more, actually, with all three of them. I think that the trio, the Dotty, Tiff and Keegan... It's is quite a good brilliant. trio, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I, like, I do quite like it as a trio. And it's nice to have a young cast, which is not just, you know, silly drug stories or alcoholism yeah. stories or something like that. So, yeah. I I'm... mean, I'm just looking forward to the moment that Dotty kind of really steps up to the forefront and has her own big story, because I really like Dotty's character. Same. She's a complete bitch, but I like her. <laughs> and I want her to sort of have some big moments, some big story. So hopefully this is, whatever this is, is the start of something leading into a bigger Dotty year. I mean, Dotty is holding uh, uh, some information back about Ruby as this week... Stacey feels incredibly guilty, not helped by the fact that Ruby is kind of pushing the guilt along a little bit um, has, and has convinced Martin that Stacey is lying, that she was pushed down the stairs by Stacey. She wasn't, was she? She kind of tripped on her heel, didn't she? When she yeah, she's kind of the heel kind of bent. Mm. But yeah, Ruby is now fully taking advantage of the situation and is, as far as she's concerned, Stacey is responsible for her miscarriage. Now, What's interesting here is that Martin, I don't think, is 100% behind her on that. No. It's because he was having a fairly deep heart-to-heart with Stacey, talking about how he doesn't know how to help her. And a sort of thing that you... It was a sort of kind of deep emotional conversation that I don't think you would have with somebody who who you believe is responsible for your girlfriend having a miscarriage. Kush has also said about when Stacey locked Ruby in the office to pee on a stick. Yeah. And... I think a few bits and pieces. I, I think Martin does think that Stacey has done some wrong there. I don't know whether she he thinks that she's gone as far as perhaps caused the miscarriage. And I, I said this last week, I do sympathise with Ruby a little bit because she, you know, her world has collapsed around her. Um, Martin's world mm. has co- collapsed around him. And Stacey and Ruby are kind of almost fighting each other over how to look after one another and in the end ruby just kind of said well you know do what you want to do and i think martin felt almost conceded to say well i think the only way i'm going to get around this is by basically saying i'll take your side ruby um mm. and i'll only have contact with stacy as uh as a father of what you know of all of your litter you know so yeah. I, I again it's it's like i said last week i feel real sorry for martin because He's had to deal with losing a child and being in the middle of this horrible catfight between Ruby and Stacey. It's... Which isn't helped this week by Lily turning up no. at the uh, <laughs> at the flat. With I see the thing is with this with this version of Lily, I don't know whether she was trying to be sweet and kind and kind of confused by what was going on or whether there was ulterior motive behind it because the way that Lily's now characterised is of this really evil child to the point where I don't even think the name Lily suits her anymore because originally <laughs> Lily was you know Claudia Winkleman Lily was oh. really sweet and sort of innocent and mm. it suits Lily it sort of suited her whereas this one I think would be better named something like Cruella either way I think the inclination was supposed to be that Lily doesn't under- really understand what's going on and it was sort of I think it was supposed to be an attempt at that sort of moment that you have to explain something as horrible as a miscarriage to a young kid. Mm. And Lily's sort of warped understanding of it is that she can't see how it would possibly be Stacey's fault, mm. I think, was her thinking. I think so she, she was... went round with flowers to try and appease Ruby. Yeah, she was defending and tried her to mum, persuade her. She? 
So, yeah, I, which seemed to be the, the main reason for a visit. But like I say, at the same time, it's kind of difficult to see niceness in this version of Lily. <laughs> no, I know. It's really difficult. But it, yeah, when you saw this this softer side of her t- this week. Um, and it, I was suspicious. It, I was, yeah, I was the same. But I don't know. Maybe we're just, maybe again, we're kind of watching it through, you know. Cynical. Cyn- very cynical. <laughs> yeah, cynical glasses. Maybe she was yeah. genuinely, I mean, she wasn't defending her mum. I think she was kind of just saying, you know, I'm sorry to hear what had happened, but. I can't believe that, you know, my mum would do something like that. And again, that kind of then Martin watched this happen and Martin kind of from a side thought, "Mm, maybe, I don't know, maybe Stacey wouldn't have done that. Yeah, maybe that was the other sort of reason as to sort of make something land in Martin's head. I didn't think of that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a a hard situation. It's a hard story to tell. And um, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, the fallout of that is going to be awful, I feel. And uh, it's probably it's going to be a terrible. I mean, is this is this the kind of story which is the end of Ruby? Do you think this is there's no No. redemption of her? No, 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 no. No, because it's one of those. I know it's because it's one of those stories where it's 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 a reaction to quite a serious psychological event, isn't it? Mm. It's like she's lost her baby. She's looking for someone to blame. Uh, and she was also at war with Stacey, so the two naturally must coincide. <sighs> she's, she's just very mentally broken at the moment. Yeah. And I, think yeah. That gonna, I don't think her and Martin are long for this world, to be honest. Um, and I, to be honest, I can see uh, Martin and Stacey sort of getting back together by the end of the year as well. So well, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I think they're dragging it along deliberately for Stace, uh, not Stacey, uh, Lacey. Until Lacey Turner gets back. Yeah. Exactly, exactly that. So I think that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to stretch out this story long enough so that when the fallout happens, Lacey's now back as a permanent character and they can be like, hey, Martin and Stacey are back together. Macy, Yay. starting, Macy. whatever. starting, I like that. <laughs> that's the week. Having talked back on it with you, I'm, I'm a bit more chipper mm. about it. This at the, beginning, at the beginning of the show, I was a bit like, Oof. But no. Now you've gone from Phil Mitchell at the start to Honey Mitchell at the end. It's I do. Lovely. <laughs> Sweetness and light, that's me. We're going to have a quick chat about the special effects after the video was released on social media from EastEnders on I Ain't Want to Gossip. You know me, I ain't want to gossip. So it's a little bit of a special treat to you listeners out there because we like to treat you, don't we, Rob? We do. Yeah, we do. We're going to just have a quick chat about the video that was released this week on uh, EastEnders twitter and instagram if you haven't watched it just go to the official eastenders uh, pages on those and you can see it's worth watching it really is it's an eight minute video all about how they've been able to construct the scenes on eastenders using plates wasn't it it was called visual mm, plates plate shots plate shots yeah so where they would film they would film a scene one shot of the scene then they film another shot of the scene and they'd basically add them up and add them up add them up and then have all the characters so it looks like that all the characters are all sat around a table together or it's in the really vic. clever it's incredibly clever and it's fascinating. And I wish, I just wish that John Sen was there can kind of just talk about it too, because obviously it's delving into yeah. the kind of like the techniques that he's known in the past. It's his, it's his, hair, his area of expertise, isn't it? Abs- and I think this absolutely. is, it's really interesting. And I think actually also explains why it's taking so long to shoot these guys <laughs> at the moment. Absolutely. And because, because the rest of the soaps are not doing this. It's mm-hmm. as simple as that. And actually what you're looking at, prime example was the Slater's Christmas dinner scene, which for a start, I was wondering, is that why they called it a plate shot? Because there was a lot of plates in it. Yeah. And so basically it, what this is, like, so if you, if you remember Christmas, when the Slaters were having their Christmas dinner, you had like a whole table full of really kind of compact characters all around this quite small table in the Slater living room. Uh, and what they basically do is that they will film each character individually, or rather like maybe a couple of characters on opposite sides of a table so that they're nowhere near each other and then film each film each section from a different angle and then superimpose them all together so it looks like they're all around this table in post-production mm. and it must take an absolute age and they also highlighted which i was really pleased they did because i wanted to know how they did it and the scene when that i was mad about on um, the new year's eve episode when mick walked through the vic when he went up to the rooftop on new year's eve when he was uh, talking to the samaritans because i said i remember saying at the time they didn't have to do that shot at all they could have just had mick walk through the cellar and then go straight up the stairs but they wanted to show him walking through the pub with all these people around it and Mm -hmm. so again they had to film mick going through the pub on his own and then sort of film extras in different parts of the pub and then sort of superimpose them all together so it looked like Mick was walking through a patched pub and it looked really convincing as well, didn't it? Oh, watching those scenes back, having seen the way they were filmed, was just mind-boggling. Really well done. I mean, you cannot fault the way they're filming the soap at the moment. As you say, no other soap is doing it. Or if they are, they're doing it 
they're badly. doing it light. Well, they're just doing it badly, yeah, but they're doing I it mean, very light. I mean, to be fair, you watch Hollyoaks, and I've, never, I've, not, I've not seen Hollyoaks. Oh, Hollyoaks aren't doing it at all. Hollyoaks are not no. doing it at all. It, it, it's like um, on Coronation Street. Everyone, yeah, if there's well, a scene in, a, in the street, everyone is lit. You can visually see the you can tell, wide yeah. screen lens that they're using, so they can fit three characters who are yeah. six metres wide from and each other. And it just other, looks you know? awkward, and the mm. blocking is awkward. Like, you know, cl- again, you know, I don't want to slag them off too much. They are, they are clearly trying in really difficult circumstances, but yeah. EastEnders are just taking it to showing it how it should be done basically as far as i'm concerned yeah um it's... and this is why i said to you last night over a message that this is why i i know that the show has its detractors at the moment but i cannot hate on the show too much at the minute was that much effort is going into getting it on screen and looking normal yeah i know still i know story and camera tricks are, are two completely different two, two completely different things i know that but i'm just really appreciative of how much hard work is going into making the show look as normal as possible but you could argue there is an argument where you could say that actually no they're not they're very similar things because when you're filming a scene you have to think about what are the restrictions you have with filming a scene with regards of who you can put in the scene for it you know what i mean and so obviously they've been having bubbles where they've had and we've talked about this with there's been a lot more notable kind of block storytelling on eastenders which is kind of the the, the consequence of the having to film in this way um Mm. and so yes one is part of the other i think there's an argument there i mean yes we are i replied to you when you sent me that message like i mean there's no excuse really for the stories but in retrospect I mean, some of the stories are basically restricted because they can only film so much in such a short time. And they're under this real demand where they have to film four episodes a week on average around about 25 minutes each. I would Mm. rather that they just consolidated it and made it three episodes a week. Again, they could keep it as 20, 25 minutes a week. They could at least have the time to kind of then pour over the shots a little bit more. Because as you say, it's making the shots where they're all sitting around the table. That must have taken eight, nine different shots. That is so time consuming. And it's trying to find the balancing act of, do you do those fancy plate shots so that the soap and the environment that is being filmed in looks more realistic? Or do you kind of bank some of those and then play off a few just normal shots where they kind of you know, have them walking around the square at the kind of two metre distance. Because I don't notice a lot of those latter shots where they kind of have them very far apart at all on the show. And again, I think no, it's because they're using... them here and there. Mm, but they're using a much more tighter angles. Yeah. Uh, again, something which I'm surprised Coronation Street don't do because it's no. such an easy, cheap technique to use. Literally just have tight shots of the characters because there was one where you saw i think ruby talking to martin in the in the doorway and it was just a tight shot of ruby then they superimposed yeah. martin's shoulder in the bottom yeah, right hand corner of the that. shot they didn't have to do that but then that made it look like that they were next to each other simple yeah, it just, why, is it, why have another soap done that it's really weird yeah i love i love it you know I'm, yeah and you know like i say cory is i mean the last episode of coronation street i watched they're in this habit at the minute of um having characters wearing masks in the street and then they enter an establishment and take their masks off. Yeah. Now, I know that there is a issue with line delivery at that point and I can imagine that there are times when, especially if you're trying to do an intense scene, when, they, when they've got half their face covered, I imagine it looks more comical than anything else, which I imagine is why they're doing it that way. But it's kind of like... EastEnders, I think wisely and riskily, I would argue, mm. has t- seems to have taken the decision that COVID isn't really a thing in Wolford at the moment. They sort of brought it parallel up and universe. talked about lockdown. Yeah, parallel universe. <laughs> um, you know, when they first came back, they discussed about like lockdown and what the characters have been up to during lockdown and the effects of lockdown on some of the character stories. But I think in the past couple of months, they've sort of faded covid out of existence mm. you know mm. apart from that really random scene where mick said oh i need a mask um <laughs> or when and... they got the hand sanitizer still haven't they that's like <laughs> the one token thing they seem to add to the soap yeah. it's funny isn't it because you know realistically absolutely nothing is open at the moment so denise denise would be at home all the time she'd be able to sort out the lucas stuff a lot easier if she didn't have the, the job at the salon i would argue i mean that's the um, funny thing isn't it it's, it's like how far okay we're going back into the realms of how much do you acknowledge that COVID-19 is happening on a soap? If we yeah. were to do it absolute 100% bang real, then literally everyone would be at home yeah. doing nothing. Yeah. Can, you can't build a soap no around stories. That. You cannot There's build no a soap around There's no stories there at all. Um, and I, I honestly, I applaud EastEnders for how... I've said this I've said this for most weeks, but I just applaud them for how they've dealt with COVID. Mm. 
filming techniques. That video is fascinating, actually. So make sure you watch it if you haven't seen it yet, because it really does go a long way to explain. Because I've seen a few complaints as to why EastEnders is, is shorter in episode length at the moment. And it's like, if you take one look at that video, you understand why. No. Because the effort... That, I mean, it's again, it's like even this week, that scene where Vinny was being chased and the little and the, the little scene there, that, that, that didn't look like it was socially distanced at all, using clever camera angles and all of that sort of thing. It, you know, I just think it's really clever. I just want to ask you about episode length but I, I, to be honest with you i used to say this <laughs> even before covid had happened and I, I can't remember if i've spoken to you about it i'm a bit of an endorser of actually reducing the number of episodes down to three what how do you feel about that uh, my uh, my main argument is that i just think the quality of the show perhaps would be tuned a little bit better and it might just i know i completely agree mm. i would argue that that i mean, i i have that opinion about soap as a genre in mm. general i mm. think um, especially if you look at the ITV soaps uh, that are churning out six episodes a week, seven, I think, in Emmerdale's case. Yeah, but I get that um, for ITV yeah. because they're commercial based, so they need yeah, yeah, you know, no, but their what, highest. Oh earnings, no, I understand. You know, but, yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. But what I mean is, it's when you're churning out that level uh, and that amount of material every single week you run the risk of going into quite long periods of just rubbish because you could have a room full of the best writers, the best storyliners that the world has ever seen in the history of the world and force them to work at that level and you are going to see them very quickly run out of ideas. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I completely agree with you. I would be quite happy to see EastEnders on three days a week purely just to keep its quality at a level that's acceptable <laughs> rather than, you know... Uh, forcing soaps to constantly ch- it's like so soaps are basically a, mach- a story machine aren't they they have to keep turning and turning and turning and turning and keeping the stories going and keeping the characters interesting and you know s- sometimes they succeed sometimes they clearly struggle um you know and it's up to people's opinions as to what eras do that better than others um and i think yeah i, I would definitely agree that s- shorter uh, episode lengths are maybe the way forward from here on in. I'll be interested. It'll be interesting to see if we go back to half an hour once sort of restrictions start to ease in a few months' time. Mm. I mean, that's a random thing too. I wish they would stick to a certain amount of time. Well, it's a, it was interesting actually because Ben actually pointed out uh, something to me where they were they're actually taking things out of episodes. There's there's stuff that they're showing or is released as a spoiler that's going to happen for a ca- for a, for a storyline. And then when it's broadcast on BBC, they're actually not there. And so and people are starting to notice it, not all the time, but here and there. And it's interesting that they're keeping the episodes deliberately short, but there's content now that they could actually probably put back into the episode as a half an hour episode. Uh. But they're deliberately keeping it pulled out. keeping the. So it, it feels like they are now thinking, well, you know what? What would be better is if we try to keep the soap punchier, more snappier, uh. keep it short. I mean, I quite... I don't mind the 20 minutes. I really don't. The, the Tuesday episode is always 20 minutes. And it's funny enough, that's, that tends to be one of my favourite episodes because it feels punchy, it feels quick, it feels short. I, I would argue that. I mean, I haven't really noticed the difference in length of episodes since it, since it's come back. I'll be honest, I haven't really sat there thinking, oh, this is that was short. God, that, I could tell that was only 20 minutes long. I, it's, it's, it's all felt fairly natural, which means that things like the New Year's Day episodes, which are a whole hour, are a mm. real treat. That, that's right. That's another reason why I kind of like the idea of shortening it or bringing it down to a few episodes, because then when you have a big hour long or a big week where they could maybe have four episodes or five episodes where a big story yeah. is happening or, or is ending, you know, it makes it more of a treat. It makes it more exciting. Mm. Makes I, those big hour specials as important as they used to be in the early days. Remember exactly. when you knew that, oh my God, EastEnders is on for an hour next week. It's going to be huge. It's <laughs> like, I, 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 lo- I really miss those days. You know, when you're churning out four, five, six episodes of a show a week, those big episodes don't really have that much impact anymore. So to be given a big treat episode that's an hour long like that, I think is, yeah, I'd love to go back to those days where the big story uh, culminations result in long episodes to sort of give it its worth bring it back i say yeah absolutely i strongly recommend that you guys go to the social media of eastenders and have a look at that video it's only eight minutes of length so while you're waiting for your bus to come or while you're waiting for your pasta to cook uh whatever just uh watch watch the video honestly highly recommended really interesting and let us know what you think about the special effects that eastenders use or what you think about episode lengths or episode numbers during the week you can comment below if you're watching on youtube or just get in touch with us on the email addresses or on on our social media that Rob will say at the very end of the show. However, Rob did get an email this week and uh, <laughs> I'm fascinated to know. Well, all it is really is that I got an email from Alison this week. She says, hi, Rob. 
Just wanted to let you know, you have often said incantation when you mean incarnation. It always gives me a giggle, but I thought you might want to know. Here is the definition of incantation, which I'm thinking we need to see on EastEnders beats gangsters. And then she's actually given me a link to the dictionary definition of the word incantation. Um, were you aware that I was doing this? No, I really wasn't. Ah. Well, apparently it's not just me, because then, because I, I said, oh, well, well, I'll have to bring, I'll have to bring this up with Alex, and uh, she then goes on to say, oh, Rob, please don't blame Alex. He is the master of misusing words, <laughs> so I am sure he didn't. Ca- so I'm sure he didn't catch it. I can keep a running list if you'd like. In this last episode, for example, he referred to bringing Ash back into the hold as opposed to to the fold, and then she says, seriously, you're both very fun to listen to, and I love the, pod- the podcast. So basically, we have been littering the podcast with Malapur propisms left right and center oh no i i, I must admit mm. allison and rob and i have a constant joke there's bits that i cut out where i just make words like today t- today for an example no wonder yeah. you were laughing so much i said what i had my heart in my head or something like that instead yeah. of my yeah oh i had my i had my heart in my neck i had my, <laughs> <laughs> I had my stomach in my heart <laughs> I am terrible. What was it a couple of weeks ago? I said, um, brush it under the floorboards or something like that. Instead no, brush of it, brush it under the floor. Yeah. 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 What was the other thing you, you said? You said you told me a story once where you said I heard out of the corner of my ear. Yes. And all that kind of thing. Oh God. Yes. That's yes. That was, that's a story of that, that you, wasn't uh, on the show, but that's something that happened no. in front of friends. I'm terrible. I am absolutely and last terrible. Last week, I think you were talking when we were talking about the uh, the Panasar Mitchell story, and I think you said, yeah, and the Panasars are wanting a bite of that pie. Um, which again, not a catchphrase, not a phrase used in common language <laughs> at all. But you know, and yet ironically, that's what we do. Ironically, when the game show catchphrase is on TV on a Saturday night, Great I'm edit. very, very good at it. Yeah, but I'm just. <laughs> I just make them up as I go along. But no, yeah. I, honestly, Alison, thank you so much for your email. And you are you are quite right. <laughs> I put my hands up. I am the king yeah. of using the words. Malaprisms. Yeah, using ro- words incorrectly. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty more this week on this podcast. Yeah, um, more than likely. Alison said that she's a university uh, lecturer. or something. She thinks she works at a university, so she's paid oh. to notice these things. So she must twitch when she listens to our podcast. Oh, God, Alison. <laughs> oh, God, now I'm terrible. I'm going to be very paranoid now when I uh, edit the show. I'm going to be very... See, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to think of now. I'm no, going to be... see, uh, just brush it, just brush it all under the floor. I will. Alex. I will. It'll be absolutely fine. I, I'll, I'll wear my um, heart on my socks. Do you... <laughs> your esophagus in your stomach. I, th- I think, okay, I think it's best that we move on and we let people know how to get in touch with us. Okay. Uh, you can contact us on Twitter or Instagram at Wolford Weekly. Find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos and for Ben's roundup of the week. I wonder what he's eating this week. I see it'll be some oh. delightful comestible. I think um, he had a donut this week, didn't he? He did, he did and he got called out because it wasn't vegan, but he's only vegetarian. Oh, yeah. So he's Although, okay. I would argue that that picture of him eating the donut that he's put on the <laughs> remove the donut, that's a very, very different picture. All the um, pictures. You can listen to all, us. <laughs> sorry, I have to, to, I'm gonna go for it. All the pictures of what he posts of his uh, title cards is literally him with his mouth wide open. He is it. opening himself up very, very, <laughs> very dangerously to some Tell photoshopping. If it. I knew how to Photoshop, <laughs> Ben would be in danger, girl. Um, you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, or any of your favourite podcast sites. Email us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. We will be back next week talking about gangsters and Wolford and all sorts of fun like that. Until then, we both bid you goodbye. Goodbye.